Hi, this is a walkthrough video for Lab 3.2. We're going to be working in SQL Server Management Studio once again, and this is a requirement for CIS 3060 Managing and Visualizing Business Data. Now, this is a, a relatively short lab, but if you've never worked in SQL Server Management Studio, this can be quite daunting. So I'm hoping that this video will be able to kind of uh, re relieve some uh, stress that you might have and also help you through the entire exercise. Now, it looks like there's a lot of things to do here, but in reality, it's really simple. And I'm going to step you through mostly all of this so uh, you can relax a little bit and just kind of follow through with this video. Now, if there's any time there's anything that... Um, is a question, you can always go back to the document. I have everything um, provided for you. Now, at the very end, there are a few questions that you'll need to be able to answer. You're going to include this in a Word document, and you're going to submit that for your completion of the lab in As You Learn. So let's go ahead and get started. One of the first things that we need to do is we need to create a folder in your student shared directory. And if you recall, we're using this particular directory constantly. So uh, it might be good to put this into your memory. So I'm going to go ahead, first of all, go ahead to uh, File Explorer. And I am going to go to that directory. And I am in CIS00. Of course, that 00 applies to me. Um, go ahead and put in your particular um, server that you've been assigned to. So if you've been assigned to CIS10 or 08 or whatnot, go ahead and put that directory in. So, um, oh, I don't know why that happened. <laughs> Let's try this one more time. Let's go CIS uh, dash um, analytics dot ITS dot app state edu backslash cis00 there now it pops up all right that's where i want to be now i have several folders in mind and you might not have any folders what we want to do is we want to create a pet store folder now i have several pet store folders so let me um let's just say that we're going to create a new folder i am going to call this one now uh pet store and we're going to call this video for me uh, but for you, maybe you can just put your last name. So maybe like Pet Store uh, Kalita would be my last name. But I have several of those created already. But remember, this is the, the folder that I'm going to want to save things into, right? So call yours Pet Store, and you can put a suffix at the end of it. You can see I have Pet Store, Pet Store 2, and I believe I have a few other Pet Stores in there as well. But once you created a folder, go ahead and let's go back to SQL Server Management Studio. Now, since we've kind of gone through uh, logging in and getting acquainted with SQL Server Management Studio in the previous labs, I went ahead and got started right away. Um, in the previous lab, we um, connected to the Blue Ridge uh, database, and this time we're going to create a new database. And I assume that you have completed that lab, so getting connected to SQL Server Management Studio should not be an issue for you. All right, so go ahead and open up your SQL Server Management Studio. And when you get to the Databases folder, what I want you to do is right-click on Databases and go ahead and select uh, New Database. I almost uh, clicked on Attach there. All right, in this New Database, all right, um, what we're going to do is we're going to call this uh, Pet Store. I'm going to put underscore. By the way, never use spaces with uh, this particular course. Um, make sure that you always use underscore. And I'm going to call this one Pet Store uh, Kalita. Now, one of the things that we really want to make, um, make a change to is going to be the location of our particular uh, files. And currently, uh, by default, it's going to get stored in the S and the L files. Now, I typically have students that will save in these particular files. And if they do, they can't find their database again. And that becomes, um, well, it can be a small problem. So make sure that you properly make these changes that we're going to discuss. So in the very first one, what we're going to do is select on the three dots here to the right, and we can see our folders that were in our directory. Now, if you don't remember what we did in the last video, just know that you're going to, if you go all the way up to the root of this folders, you're going to see multiple folders here. What you need to do is select on the D drive, expand out the D drive, and go all the way down to the shares folder, the student shares, which should be at the bottom. 
Once you expand that, you should be able to see all of the servers. I'm in CIS00, so I'm going to expand that. And I want to look for that new pet store that I just created, which is right here. Of course, whichever one you created is the one that you're going to select on. So I'm going to select on pet store video, which applies to this particular video. All right. Now you can see here in the path that my share folder has changed. I need to change to the same location for our logs folder. And if we click on the three dots, it should bring up the exact same folder. Once we see that it's identified, go ahead and select on OK. Okay, so now that we've double checked that we have our database name and then our path location set, we can go ahead and hit OK. All right, so now we should be able to see our, um, our database show up here on the left hand side. And if you expand the directory, we'll see a bunch of different things. We see database diagrams, and if we expand it, there's going to be a question if we want to um, create a new database diagram. If you see this, go ahead and select on yes. Also, if you expand the tables, you'll see that it'll expand out tables. And if you look, there is nothing here after graph tables. It's because there's no tables in here. So we have to put them in ourselves. So let me show you how to do that. Let's go ahead and we're going to start a whole new query in the pet store database. So I'm going to right click on pet store and type in new query. By the way, for reference, when we get to this new query window, we also need to make sure that our database is listed up here, the one that we're going to be applying to. If it says something other than the database that we wanted to, we need to make that change. And you can simply hit this little drop down arrow on the side, and this will give you a list of all the databases in there. Notice that our Blue Ridge University database is there as well. So this is the pet store database I want, so I'm in the right place. The first thing that we want to do is we want to create um, create a, a several of our tables. Now, inside of um, the assignment, I had given you already the, um, no, I'm sorry. I had given you the uh, requirements that we had need to have for this particular database. So, for example, we need to create these three tables, and I've given you the data um, types for each of these particular addresses but that's okay we're going to walk through this here in this in this little video so let's uh get to it really quick the first table that we're going to make is actually going to be the pet table now as i mentioned before when we uh run our queries we want to make sure that we are running queries based off of uh, our particular database now to kind of clean up and making sure that we are running um against our database, one little trick that we can do is put a use statement. And we just simply say use, and we put the name of our database, and in my case, the name is Pet Store Kalita. So once I type in that, I can hit go, and I can leave this at the top of my SQL statement, and this will always be included. All right, so we're gonna create a new table, and really basically the SQL for that is create, uh, table and it, we're going to call this tbl underscore pet okay we're going to put a parentheses here and one right after and i'm just going to hit enter between the two parentheses to separate them some and we're going to put some information um, right here after the first line okay so and this is inside of our um our document. So if you are having a difficulty in mis in understanding exactly the text that I'm typing, you can always refer back to the document that we're dealing with. So the first thing we want to do is we want to be able to put several uh, columns in this particular table. And here's how we put columns in tables. We type the name of the columns and this I want pet and I want it to be pet ID and I want this to be an integer data type. Okay. But, and in addition to this ID, I want to give it a constraint. So I'm going to hit Enter, Tab, and I'm going to type the word constraint, right? Now, a constraint is something that we're going to add to only our primary keys. And we're going to call this, or we're going to give a name, we're going to call it PK Pet, which stands for Primary Key Pet Table. And we're going to call it a Primary 
a key constraint. And we're going to put comma at the end of this. All right. So in the next uh, particular column, I want I want pet underscore type. And this is going to be a var car and it's going to be 25. Okay, and this stands for a variable character type, 25 uh, characters in length. The next is going to be pet underscore description. And this is also going to be a var car uh, 25. Uh, pet underscore price and this is going to be a money a data type pet underscore um, cost and this is going to be a money data type by the way i want to keep my pets uh, my suffix to be all lowercase so i just made that change uh, pet underscore supplier name now, I'm making supplier name in a what's called camel case style, where there's no spaces, but I'm making the capital letter of each word or the cap, the letter, the first letter of each word to be capitalized. This will be a var car uh, 25 as well. And I'm going to give it a constraint of being not null, meaning that I, I must have a value in this particular um, field. And then I'm going to have pet underscore store ID. And this is going to be an integer. And this is also going to be not null. Now, I'll give you a little hint. The reason why these are not null is because these are going to be keys, uh, foreign keys to um, other tables. All right. So that's actually going to be the last field. What I have to do is put the uh, last parentheses on the following line, followed by a semicolon. All right. With that, I am going to um, go back, go down a few lines and just type the word go. Now, this could be wrong, and I'm going to hit execute here, and I'm going to see just what happens. So here we go. We hit execute, and I have an error over by pet price. And I have to kind of see what one of the issues is. Now, I can recognize right away that I forgot a comma at the end of the previous line. And that is a very common error. So make sure that you include those properly. Now, we do not need a comma at the end of the last line as that becomes, you know, the last particular line. So let me execute it one more time. And I have that it's been completed successfully. If I come over here to the left and I should be able to refresh my particular databases expand out tables and you can see that now i have a pet table right here okay so i'll continue this lab in the next video